the White House has made a major decision that could affect the future of space policy in the U.S. But will it have the effects they hope? Roscosmos thinks they may have narrowed down the cause of the leak at the International Space Station. But today, we'll talk about whether there is an immediate danger to the station and its crew. And SpaceX just announced that they are ready to take the next stage in their Starlink system. All this and more. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Undiscovered Country. I'm your host, Bryant A.M. Baker. I'm back after a long delay in shows due to some stuff happening behind the scenes. I'm happy to be back with you. As always, this briefing will count down the top five most important things happening in the world of space. Let's get started. Number five. As chair of the National Space Council, Vice President Kamala Harris announced on Monday the individual selected to serve on the National Space Council's Users Advisory Group, or UAG. Pending official appointment by the administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the selected members of the UAG will serve to enable the Biden-Harris administration's efforts to maintain a robust and responsible U.S. space enterprise and preserve space for current and future generations. The UAG will provide the National Space Council advice and recommendations on matters related to space policy and strategy, including government policies, laws, regulations, treaties, international instruments, programs, and practices across the civil, commercial, international, and national security space sectors. Importantly, even that is not an exhaustive list. But with such a large group of individuals across sectors, what remains to be seen is how useful this list of individuals will end up becoming. Number 4 L3 Harris Technologies has announced plans to acquire Aerojet Rocketdyne for $4.7 billion. If approved, but a transaction that would see the nation's sole independent solid rocket motor manufacturer would be bought up by a major defense prime contractor, albeit one currently without a major stake in the missile business. The deal, which was announced yesterday and is subject to approval by the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, is expected to close in 2023. In January, the FTC filed suit to block Lockheed Martin from doing the same thing, buying Aerojet in a $4.4 billion transaction. The regulatory body's major concern was that because Lockheed Martin is one of the biggest prime contractors that makes missiles and space systems, its purchase of Aerojet would give it the chance to cut out the competition. Uh, Lockheed walked away from the deal in February. And while this latest announcement seems to have a lot of the same flavor to it, the announcement was made at least with some expectation of success. In a statement, L3 Harris and Aerojet said the newly announced deal would bolster the defense industrial base at large. The companies published that, quote, The acquisition will ensure the defense industrial base and our customers will have a strengthened merchant supplier to effectively address both current and emerging threats and promote scientific discovery and innovation through targeted investment in advanced missile technologies, hypersonics, and more. Number 3 U.S. launch and space systems company Rocket Lab called off its Sunday evening liftoff of its first electron rocket mission from the United States over upper-level high winds. The launch at NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia was scrubbed with less than a dozen minutes left on the countdown. The company was shooting for launches either on the 19th or the 20th, but neither have worked out due to the lingering weather conditions. Rocket Lab has already conducted 32 electron missions from New Zealand, but Sunday's was supposed to be the first from U.S. soil. The mission, titled Virginia is for Launch Lovers, aimed to deploy three satellites for radio frequency geospatial analytics provider Hawkeye 360, with the Virginia launch pad having been 
developed specifically to support electron missions for government and private customers. Rocket Lab was prepared to launch Electron on December 16th, but the night before announced that the launch was postponed two days to allow NASA, which operates the Wallops flight facility co-located with Mars, and the Federal Aviation Administration to complete what the company called range-driven documentation. Rocket Lab chief executive Peter Beck said in a December 16 interview that the issue involved differences between NASA and the FAA on range safety and flight safety documentation. Beck said he was disappointed and frustrated with the delay. This is the first time, and there's always going to be some teething issues. But he said, I guess we're just frustrated that these teething issues didn't happen six months ago. It happened literally days before we were ready to launch. Number two. A leaky Russian Soyuz spacecraft docked to the International Space Station has a small hole in it. The Soyuz's coolant leaked away on Wednesday night, December 14th, as two cosmonauts were getting ready to perform a spacewalk outside the orbiting lab. In the days since, Russia's space agency Roscosmos has been trying to nail down the cause and consequences of the leak, with some help from its ISS partners. NASA officials wrote in a Monday evening blog post, a small hole was observed, and the surface of the radiator around the hole showed discoloration. Roscosmos is evaluating the imagery to determine if this hole could have resulted from micrometeoroid debris, or if it is one of the pre-manufactured radiator vent holes. Roscosmos stressed there is no immediate danger regarding the damaged Soyuz spacecraft, and if the crew cannot fly home aboard the damaged craft in March of 2023, as is currently planned, Roscosmos officials wrote that the Soyuz MS-23 spacecraft can be quickly prepared for launch to replace the damaged Soyuz MS-22. Officials added that Soyuz MS-23 is located at Baikonur and has already passed part of the tests before the scheduled launch in March, referring to the usual Kazakhstan launch site controlled by Russia, which services the ISS for both cargo and crewed launches. Number 1 SpaceX could start launching second-generation Starlink satellites in the coming weeks to add more capacity to its increasingly congested broadband network. On December 16th, regulatory filings were made with the Federal Communication Commission, wherein SpaceX said it anticipates that it will begin launching Generation 2 satellites before the end of December 2022. The company is asking the FCC for a 60-day Special Temporary Authority, or STA, to connect existing user terminals to the upcoming satellites in non-geostationary orbit. If granted, the STA would allow SpaceX to start providing Generation 2 services while waiting for the FCC to process its application for longer-term approval. SpaceX tweeted on December 19th that Starlink has more than 1 million active subscribers, up from 250,000 the company said it had in March. The network has come under strain amid its growing popularity, according to analysis from Ookla, showing how median Starlink download speeds have continued to fall. In addition to adding more capacity for existing Starlink customers, SpaceX is hoping to use Gen 2 to add new capabilities, including direct-to-smartphone users. Thank you so much for joining me. Links, as always, to all the stories are in the description. I would love to hear your thoughts on everything I talked about here today. If you feel like this information has been helpful for you, please consider giving it a like or a rating and subscribing and following the content. I am honored to be a part of this community of citizens in this undiscovered country of ours, and I'll see you again next time.